joined in the studio now by the Executive Chairman of DMCC, Ahmed bin Salem. A very good morning to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Glad to be here at the Ramadan Morning Show. <laughs> Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem to you, sir. We're going to talk about DMCC in a second. But first of all, the thing, the news that prompted us to invite you into the studio is not your business, uh, but your fitness regime, your health regime, because we've been reading that you are on a 30-day Joe Cross reboot juice diets, and you think that's very important. Tell us more. Well, I've uh, tried uh, something similar to that uh, a few years ago for three months, actually. And I did some uh, trials with uh, blending uh, meat. That did not go well as soup. It was too heavy. I moved on to chicken, then to uh, to lighter meats, and then to fish. And then I realized vegetables are the smoothest way. But with Joe Cross, green is all the way. And what I'm doing today is I'm doing the Joe Cross uh, diet, uh, inspired by it, and I'm adding the advanced and healthiest type of shakes that are coming out that are now in Dubai. One is called Green Athletic. And how are you doing this? I'm sure people will be very interested to know in keeping your fast during the holiday well, of Ramadan, you, which is very important to you. You have to avoid uh, you have to avoid uh, areas where society might uh, distract you from your target. So you will not see me any Ramadan, in any Ramadan tents. Since I've stopped smoking in 2007, I actually avoid going to Ramadan tents. And in the last three years, I don't even go to uh, these tents at all uh, whatsoever. So I don't, I'm not surrounded with these big buffets and the kunafas. Reading part of the briefing for this uh, interview, it suggests that you've got uh, issues with posture, but you look like a fairly sort of strong, uh, upstanding, healthy gentleman. Well, that's... Uh 13 years working for Sheikh Mohammed uh, the, uh, in the line uh, the race to excellence there's no finish line so if I can uh, progress better I will and the workout that I do because I'm fasting to avoid injuries I go for a swim before iftar and I have hand pads and weighted uh, mini flippers and I have the goggles and the snorkel and that's to fix and work out as much as I can without any injuries but on the posture side it, it uh, Matt Co moved me up to working out on kettlebells and that just took a life of its own we even walked up with the kettlebell work, uh, weights going up on mass tower 67 floors so your your iftar consists of juice um when do you actually exercise after that or do you before, do it early morning? always before because if you because if you have, if you work out after the iftar first of all your body is is, is just uh um, engaging with the food that you've just ingested, whether liquid or, or you just ate food, it's going to be very hard. It's it's very easier on a lighter stomach. You feel lighter. You work out lighter. You just have to be careful of getting dehydrated. That must be doubly hard exercising then. Yeah. Well, you know, nothing comes... Uh, com- you don't gain anything without compromising. And if we link this healthy lifestyle of yours to your day job, which is the executive chairman of, of DMCC, a lot of people will know that as the organization, in many ways associated with Jamira Lake Towers, the big yes. development there. And just a few months ago, you opened a park, didn't you, yes. w- within that development, which has a running track and it has a basketball court and it has exercise machines as well as a grassed area for, for playing games, which was part of your vision to have it as not just a business hub or a place to live, but somewhere where a healthy lifestyle was was part of that it, it has been so successful that people from other communities have moved to JLT um, the way we look at Jamir Lake Stars or, the, or as we're calling it more so nowadays DMCC community is to add more and more amenities where we can it doesn't have to be the lakes it could be in common areas that, uh, or so um, we also announced the uh, the uh, construction of uh, Athman ibn Affan Masjid, and that also attracted more people to work and live in Jamir Lakes Towers. It is to add more amenities to make the uh, community more holistic. You were widely quoted, I think misquoted, as saying that you don't like lakes um, around the uh, JLT area, but you're quite often found jogging around them. Well, you know, uh, it's uh, it's true, but if if the the timeline is misleading uh i actually tried to do away with the lakes before there were any lakes and faithful and gold and the others have so said that it's going to take longer time and it's going to cost you more it's the time that uh, i couldn't afford so i said fine so we'll, we'll go with it but it w- you could you would have seen a JLT community with lots of amenities in the middle, not towers or villas, just amenities that uh, add value, schools, etc. 
How, how are you happy with the, the road access to and from JLT now? I think the RTA are listening to the community. Mm. Um, it used to be uh, us and Parsons. There was no RTA. And I recall a conversation with Parsons where they had a two-way road with signal lights. And I refused that. I said, I'd, ra- I'd like a one-way road. And they said, you're the only one. And I, I kept on saying, I'm not paying for the roads twice. They didn't understand what I'm saying. What I was coming f- from is traffic is going to be so bad, you're going to have to break down the roads, redo them again, do away with the signal lights. Why should I waste money on that? If we you're happy anyway now. Very happy yeah. because I, I, I got my way with Parsons. Um, RTA came afterwards and bashed up things. And the RTA story is more about exit and entrances to JLT more than anything else. If we look at the story so far for 2014, the the half-term report, if you like, for DMCC, let's look in terms, first of all, as your status as a free zone and companies joining the free zone. We know there's been huge growth over the past 10 years, described often as one of the world's fastest growing or, or largest free zones. How has 2014 been? What can you share with us? Well, uh, there's two ways of uh, handling it uh, as an executive. We, I could sit and talk about the history of how we got here, or I could use that track record to attract more businesses. And a lot of businesses want to know your experience as a free zone and how you interact with members. And in, in, in reality, we're, we're closing into 9,000 members in DMCC. And, and these 9,000 members, most if not all, are ambassadors of DMCC in addition to what we do. How many of those 9,000 actually have premises within the JLT area? That they, all, sort of they, all, they all do. They all all of, do. Every the single only, one of them. The only, the only way they can't is if we run out of space and they have to move to the Bush 2020 district, our expansion. And talking about the Bush 2020 district, uh, that's something a lot of our members are looking for and, and potential members are looking forward to. One example is Amit Damani, Damani Jules. He has, uh, uh, he has uh, created a, a Dubai Expo 2020 diamond necklace um, inspired by the victory, as uh, uh, symbolized by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Maktoum, the Vice President, Prime Minister of UAE, rule of Dubai. Um, it's a, this necklace has been designed with the uh, inspiration of Dubai's heritage and legacy, defining elegance, glamour, and refinement of the city uh, of Dubai's victory. It's made out of uh, 2020 uh, brilliant cut round diamond. So there's a lot of uh, hype around that expansion. You were talking about not having space and people moving into other areas. Um, what about yourself as uh, DMCC? 9,000 members, how, what's your limit? And do you have any land bank or space that you could expand into? That's the uh, Bush 2020 expansion. It has a business park, it has a business hotel, and it will house the tallest commercial tower in the world, which we had a hard time naming because it's a, it's an iconic tower. But when Dubai won the Expo 2020, we had the press release ready of naming it Burj 2020, and that went out. That made so much news, it almost, uh, I think it did overshadow the news of Dubai winning the Expo 2020. In terms of the, the tallest tower and tower blocks being a big part Office, of... Office, com- commercial tower. Co- sorry, commercial tower, let, let me clarify that. W- one question that I've had posed to me by large multinational companies is that we don't really want to be in a tower block, we want to be in a low-rise development, we want to have more people, more floor space, so towers are difficult for us if we've got 500, 1,000 staff. We don't want to have our, our staff on 10 floors of a building, we want them to have them on one or two or three floors of a building. What can you do for, for tenants like that. That's already underway. We are constructing uh, one JLT, which is G plus 14. Uh, it's Leeds Gold, and it's with it's, uh, it's a very wide uh, building. It's with uh, it's the width of almost three towers. So you have wide open floor space. So that's already there, and we might replicate that. Um, going back to Burj 2020, we will not be selling it as units. We'll be selling it between 5 to 25 floors. So that also covers uh, the multinationals and business empires that want to have one address for all their businesses. Um, just uh, very briefly on the uh, DGCX, how happy are you with the development of that exchange? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm the most impatient son in the family and the most impatient executive you'll see. So I've been waiting for the gold spot uh, uh, contract to be listed, but Singapore beat us to that. The silver lining to that is we'll look at what mistakes they've done and 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 have it as see it as a way of them paving the way for us. But ours will be unique, as in you can trade the gold spot trading anywhere else in the world and in other exchanges. You have to be in that city. Well, we do appreciate your.
your time this morning very much. Ahmed bin Suleyem, the Executive Chairman of the DMCC. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shukran